Yes, everybody, you know what time it is. Once again, back with Ash Maddock here from Spurs Kings TV. Do everybody check out his channel. It's going to be in the description, in the comments, pinned uh, as well down below. But we're going to be talking about Eve Spasuma because after this weekend and over the last few weeks, I have been hearing Spurs really do need a, a new number six this summer. And with that in mind, I feel like, you know, does that mean his kind of position is under threat? With his position being under threat, could his future really be under threat, right? Because in the beginning of the season, you know, he's talking to everybody. He's doing interviews all over the place. Everybody's loving Basuma. I still love Basuma. I think he definitely, you know, has, you know, still the capacity to get back to that incredible form that he showed in the beginning of this season. But this feels like a unnecessary conversation about if he doesn't get back to his best self and if he doesn't show that consistency and people do want a new number six, could kind of be. Yeah, the original spell that we saw of him where he looked like the future, you know, looked like the the starting kind of a uh, man in that midfield and, you know, potential star in that midfield. Could that all be now under threat and could his overall Spurs future really be under threat? Start first with the basics, though, with you, Ash. Do you want a new number six this summer? Is that a big priority for you? And if you do, what does that number six bring that you feel like has been missing from anybody in that midfield or even Basuma in particular? So I would like competition. That's how I'm going to drop it. So I think with Basuma, I would like someone to push him. So he, he's not always nailed on starter. He knows his place is under threat. I want to see a six that might have slightly different attributes to him on the ball. I think on the ball, Basuma brings... I mean, like the real Basuma, he brings ball carrying, he brings um, good dribbling, good technique. Uh, I feel like he's really press resistant. Yep. Um, he's good, got good spatial awareness in terms of agility. I think he's got good agility as well. Um, I remember when he was playing for Brighton, he in that season, he was one of the best midfielders in the league, in my opinion. And he bossed Liverpool, he bossed Man United, and he bossed Arsenal on that last day of the season. I remember him coming to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and bossing us. And when we signed him, I was like, oh, my days. We've finally solved the problem. We've got a player that's press resistant. What I mean by that is when defenders are pressing us at the back and we're trying to build up, he's able to turn the player where the pressure is he's able to turn the opposite side and then once you beat that opposition's press you've got the whole pitch to run through and it turns into a quick transition it looks like a counter attack because you've beaten that press you've left you've taken out four or five players just by one piece of skill and that's what basuma would bring um to us so that's what i mean i would like if i'm having a different player in that position i would like someone that it's almost like some people call him Metsala, someone that can um, get the ball and he sprays the ball. So he mm. can do the ball, you can pass the ball in behind so you can find our front threes, uh, front three players a lot quicker. Um, so if, if, for example, people are talking about Werner, Werner's always free, no one finds him. Or Johnson's always free, they never find him. Or Son's making the runs, but they're not. I would like a player that's able to not think twice about it they're finding that ball even before that the players started running they're, they're they're hitting those diagonals they're doing those balls over the top they can spray it along the floor they can almost like when bentacore first came and we had harry winks and bentacore came on the pitch that first game and he did a pass and it was along the floor but it was so precise and it was so quick and it had no backspin it was like oh my days this yeah. is what we're missing so i would like someone that's slightly different in profile in that on the ball on the ball i think off the ball there's nothing wrong with basuma yeah. i still feel like um he's winning his jewels he's 1v1 jewels i think physically he's still there like he's still physical he's a physical player gets stuck in um some people complain about you know his ill discipline you know he's a bit late in his challenges does complain yeah. to the ref a bit sometimes he picks up unnecessary yellow cards and I think you can critique him on that side, but in terms of winning the ball back, and these are things that got, got unnoticed by the fan base. 
if you actually look at his stats for the first 10 games and compare it to now, the drop-off hasn't been that bad defensively. If you look at how much ground he covers as well, he's one lone pivot. But as a one lone pivot, he covers a hell of a lot of ground. I agree. So for me, defensively, you're doing your job. I think the reason why he's getting so much stick at the moment is because he's not doing those things. He's not getting to the penalty box as much. He's not driving up the pitch. He's not a part of our um, playing out from the back. You don't really associate Basuma playing out from the back and yeah. being resistant as such. Yeah. And so those are the attributes where people are like, oh, oh man, where's Basuma gone? Like, and, and also, I felt like he scapegoated slight, slightly, where if things aren't going too well, oh, he looks lethargic, he looks lazy, he looks disinterested. Mm -hmm. These lazy narratives are being formed about him all because he's no longer carrying that ball, he's no longer dribbling that ball in that same way. I I honestly think, and I don't know if I'm jumping ahead here because I've wrapped this Well, I was going to say what's kind of disappointing, Ash, is I actually agree with absolutely everything that you have said so far and like especially what you sort of brought up with on kind of what the new number six would bring this summer like in particular that what basuma maybe hasn't been and i'd say that what you said about kind of that longer range of passing the switching of play that sort of thing is missing in his game you don't really see that nearly as much he doesn't really just pick up the ball off the center back see maybe Verner or you know Johnson you know hugging the wing you know all by themselves and spray it out wide to them and then all of a sudden a move is kind of started you know very easily and very naturally from there and what's weird right is somebody who is going to be going this summer who I think is certain to go this summer who actually does that as maybe an example of you know how easy it is or maybe just how necessary it is is Hoiberg and I think Ange has done that on plenty of occasions where he's brought on Hoiberg to actually do that more that longer range of passing that more direct kind of style of passing because Hoiberg we all know doesn't have the ball carrying skills and the technique in terms of his spatial awareness like you say and his press breaking ability like you say that Basuma does it's like not even close between the two right but then Hoiberg has one maybe the game starts to get a bit more stretched or there is more time on the ball has actually and sometimes had to go on and to maybe do what Ange has been needing that Basuma hasn't been doing which is right moving the ball actually quicker playing more direct passes into players that are standing in open areas that will take right a more sharp and more direct type of pass whether it's a longer range over the top a spray like you say you know and all those type of things that I think Hoyberg weirdly has been doing when he's been called upon as an impact sub this season and it's been kind of missing from Basuma's game but I also agreed with what you said on the kind of the defensive end of things is does Basuma lack in the defensive areas? Absolutely not. Like, I don't think he, he really does. He covers so much ground. Like you say, you know, he's almost a, a one man kind of a defensive mastermind in the way that he can just cover both, you know, parts of uh, the 18. And I just say, you know, that part is also really slept on. I just, I just want to, I just want to add to it as well. Um, if I can. So mm -hmm. I know I already said, I would like a person that could, you know, get on the ball and be more direct in terms of passing. But why can't we have both? Why can't we recruit a player that has a little bit of ball yeah, carry? Yeah, has it all. No. Yeah, has it all. Yeah, why not? And and also, I think I like players that are proactive. So at times when we need to have that counter pressing style where teams are trying to break on us, why can't we win the ball high up in their pitch? I want to see a defensive midfielder doing that. Win the ball high up and then recycle that ball quickly to our front three or one of our attacking players. Or if they're on the edge of the D, have a crack. Like how many times have we seen a Rodri or Rice or yeah. one of these top defensive midfielders just lace it with their boots outside of, outside the box on the edge of the D? So I want someone that's got initiative and that breaks the mold, breaks character, doesn't always do patterns of play and just stands up and has got their own mind at times within the system, can be a maverick and then score a goal individually do you know what i mean so and, and that's what's sort of been missing of recent in basuma's game where in the beginning of the season we were like blown away by what that dude can do right like we were saying in his ball carrying skills and how he is a press breaking machine on his own and also defensively can be an absolute monster by himself dare i even say like in different systems whether it's been at brighton even at one stage under Ryan Mason for that brief little spell and under Ange Postacoglu, like Basuma can almost be at his best, a one-man midfield really on his own.
but on a consistency basis, the things that you don't really see are the things you're mentioning about like sort of the passing, you know, not being as direct or really just not being as an array of sort of type of passing. It is kind of the same sort of types of passes that he makes. And then when he starts to lose a bit of confidence in himself, it feels like he takes extra touches to get closer even to the player that he maybe wants to intend it uh, towards actually. And you even said too, right, maybe having that bit of extra sort of uh, now about them to score, maybe in case, you know, an opportunity arises. Basuma, you know, it seems to just love, you know, giving a souvenir, you know, to all of his fans, you know, kind of any time he gets a shot uh, yeah. at, at the edge of the penalty area. And if you look at his record, he's not been, you know, much of a, a prolific scorer. And that's also has to do really with the nature of his position. But he does seem to not really have that sort of technique or even that type of uh yeah just kind of concentration really sort of when he is in the final third and lastly actually with where maybe some of the criticism has come from him or come towards him i do feel like is actually really with basuma and maybe this is the explanation for why we feel like we don't see the best of him i don't think it's like an attitude of laziness or anything like you said like that or you know distracting or anything like that i think it really is actually just simple concentration levels of his overall like you know, kind of full concentration. Like when you see him like fully up for it in games and fully focused, like almost lucid, you know, kind of like he wants to win this game, unplayable guy, you're just going to lose the game, you know, type of midfielder. You're going to lose the midfield battle to him. But then when he does lose that bit of confidence in himself and he doesn't seem to be fully switched on, start mm -hmm. to see these kind of mistakes kind of creep into his game. And I think the mistakes creep into his game because he has already such like a free and kind of flowing and just beautiful type of style to it that when you do make mistakes playing that sort of way, you can get punished. And it does end up looking kind of a bit sloppy or whatever, you know, kind of adjective we want to give to it. So I think he is also kind of a victim of his own beautiful kind of, you know, elegant type of style as it is, right? When he isn't fully switched on and at his best, it can look a bit, like you say, some of those, I say kind of like you, lazy adjectives that people use to describe him such as lazy or whatever i think that's where that can come from is because already his own style of play can you know has its own mistakes if he isn't fully concentrated or fully switched on with it i would well. get nonchalant i think he does that's switch off. Way to put it yeah i think he does switch off i think against a lot of people wolves. do but he does yeah. yeah yeah he did he did against wolves where positionally he should have been on the edge of the box ready to intercept maybe gomez and be aware that, you know, Neto is going to be on the uh, counter-attack. And then he had a second chance of it where he could have run back. He kind of gives up almost. Like, he, instead of, like, you know, worst-case scenario, I don't, until it's in the back of the net, I'm going to keep going, I'm going to keep going. He kind of ran and he thought, oh, there's no point, I'm not going to get back. He kind of had that kind of mentality where you're meant to fight towards the end, and that's where people were, like, blaming him because he was closest. Even though it was quite a far way off, of, of Neto, um, he was still not with Neto Gomez, he actually scored the goal. It, it was the fact that he didn't make that extra effort to get back into the box. And then if he did, he could have maybe made the block and stopped that goal from going in. And so he was blamed not once but twice for, for a he compounded an original error, right? Yeah, for the Basically, original touch. Yeah. And everybody had said in that situation. You know, like even if you're messy, you know, you shouldn't try to take a touch there, right? That's a very dangerous position to do it. He had done that and then compounded that error by I actually feel like he did the hard yards to get there. Just I don't think he had for some reason looked up to see who was actually making that late run, you know, in the box. And that was the frustrating thing. It looked like he did his overall best to try to get back, you know, like you know, put his head down, you know, get back. But then he just kept his head down. He didn't seem to actually look, you know, where who was around him. And that's an example of maybe not being fully switched on, fully concentrated, right, in in the moment in time. Um, just a, I, I know you probably have a point you want to touch on, but there's another question I had in mind where everybody's saying like, well, maybe Basuma's better served as a number eight. Do you agree with that? Because not sure if I agree with that one. Like, and I, I'd let you go first, but I don't want to ruin a point that maybe you had. Maybe for no, no, I disagree. Um, that it should be an eight. I think because he's got so much agility and he's got good close ball control, able to drop a shoulder, he's got a skill level where you associate those things with a number eight. I think as a number six, he creates the overload and springs the attack when he does drive into the box, if that makes sense. So 
that's the reason why people are thinking, oh, look, he's got the skill set of an eight. I think he should be an eight. I think he's a six because he is so physically, he's got the physicality of a six, in my opinion. And he's played that at Brighton before. And that's the reason why we bought him. Because people are forgetting how dominating he was as a six at Brighton. Exactly. Those games he won, um, well, he held Brighton to win those games and surprised a lot of the, the top six was because he was such a dominating six in that in particular midfield area. Um, there's different types of six. There's different types of DMs, in my opinion. There's there's de totally. DMs. There's DMs like because they're a, not all like to they're not complete. Not every DM is a complete DM. They all like maybe have limitations and they all have weaknesses in their game. Hoybeer, great example. And maybe sadly, we're having this conversation about Basuma right now. It might be somebody who perhaps has a weakness here or there, you know, in the position. And it seems like everybody's calling out for a more complete, more perfect kind of version of one. It's hard I, I to find honestly, one out there, but yeah, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, it's cool. I honestly think coming back to what Ange was saying, he said like the player he wants, he doesn't want like a six. He wants a player that can, you know, be multifaceted. He can play multiple positions, meaning that at times, you know, you might see a player looking like a number eight, but sometimes he might cover, he might drop into the six. It's a bit like the fullbacks. The fullbacks, they're not just playing wide or they're not just playing in the half space. Sometimes you would see Poro drop in the midfield and he's doing the balls over the top. Sometimes he's doing the switches. And then sometimes you see Poro overlapping and whipping balls into the box crossing. So that's what I mean by multifaceted. And then sometimes when we don't have the ball, he looks like an ordinary fullback because he's in that position where you expect the fullback to be. So I think in this particular system, you need players that are just good players, in my opinion, just good mm. all -around technical players. And for me, Basuma, the reason why people are so confused on them, because they're not used to seeing, if you look at Rice, for example, when Rice played the six, everyone's like, oh, Rice is amazing. But he didn't really progress the ball. He just kept the ball ticking. He used to pass it sideways. Yeah, Progressive passing for him was like a five-yard pass. Do you know what I'm saying? And he's more he's of a ball carrier, actually, at times. You know, more when he has Even and now Jorginho has been the six. He's actually more of an eight now. So now he's the ball carrier as an eight. But like everyone was saying, like, oh, Rice was the, he's the best DM. Do you know what I mean? You look at you look at other positions for other teams. You, you could argue that certain players did they play? Did they stay in their position? Did they just hold that? Xavi Alonso was a, was a six, wasn't he? Yeah. Was Xavi Alonso? Uh, was he a ball carrier? Was he a player that? No. Super tackler, like hard, like a Mascarano. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So, yeah. I, I, and football has changed, in my opinion. Because I, I, obviously, I brought up that reference, and people be like, oh, football's not, no longer like that anymore. But football has changed. I know Jabby Alonso was alongside a Mascarano, and Mascarano was more like the dog's body, and he was the one that was physical. And but then he, he's still a six. Jabby Alonso was still a defensive midfielder. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I think. The role that Ange has in mind is that, like a Pape Sar, Pape Sar, even though he's good at carrying the ball and he's energetic and he's quite front-footed and he's not afraid to get dirty, he sometimes plays in a double pivot alongside Basuma and helps him out at times. And the only criticism I've got of, of, of Basuma now is I haven't seen him roam forward as much. He's actually held back. And I don't know if that is an actual mentality thing I don't know what's happening outside. I don't know if he needs help like Richarlison. Richarlison's openly come out and said that he's getting a lot of um, therapy and that's actually helping him on the pitch. And I don't know if it's the same with Basuma because it's night and day between the one we saw earlier this season and the one Very we're true. seeing right now. Because you look at the things what happened against Man City when he was less brave, he was brave and then he lost the ball and he, we conceded the goal. Everyone was slating him. But that's what Ange wants. He said, that's on me if you do those types right. of mistakes. But now it's like he's just not doing it. It's like he doesn't trust himself anymore. Mm -hmm. He's a bit more tentative in his play and he's not venturing forward. He's not getting in the box at all, in my opinion. The last time I saw him in the box was probably like Newcastle. I know what you mean. The so, so for me, I like there's one thing like carrying a ball and there's one thing dribbling and taking men on. But if you're not venturing forward, one thing I'd say about Hoiberg when he did come on, he came on and he was getting forward. He wasn't just like sitting back. Him and Bentacore 
swapped over. And that's what I expected to see with him and Saar. I expected sometimes Saar to sit, Basuma go, and sometimes Basuma to sit and Saar go. It's meant to be interchangeable. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so for me, that's the reason why I wanted some competition for him because it's sometimes it's so much easier coming off the bench. I think that's why Hoiberg's come on yeah. and he's improved it. Like you said, sometimes it's against teams that have tired, you know? You know when teams aren't necessarily doing a low block and they give you time and space, that's when you see the best of Hoiberg. But Sumo hasn't really had that. I think after the first 10 games, people started realising we play through Basuma a lot. Let's lock him down. And then ever since he's been locked down, you haven't quite seen the, the same Basuma because he's not afforded the same time and space. And people are like, yeah. look, let's double up on him. Same things happen to Madison, by the way, where Madison, they're like, listen, if you get a bit rough on him, a bit physical, you, you, you bite his ankles a bit, you're not going to see the best of Madison. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what they're saying. Oh, these are the main players that Spurs play through. Let's kind of pin them down, in my opinion. So... I, I, mm. That's the reason why, mentality-wise, I need to see a shift. I don't know if it's a confidence thing or if it's a thing where if things are going right for the team, then you see the best of Basuma. But when things are going not so right for the team, Basuma hides a bit. Do you know what I mean? I and I can't, have anyone, I can't have anyone on the team hiding, in my opinion. I can't have anyone hiding. And he needs to, he needs to show up and get involved offensively in the game and help dictate and put pressure. I'm not saying he doesn't press. He is pressing. But in terms of when we've got the ball, I'm not saying carry or dribble, but make sure you're in an attacking area and you're here to help offensively. You're able to run into the box at times. Yeah. That's what I need to see from Basuma. I completely agree with so much that you've said here in, in this one. And um, for me, my final verdict really is I love Basuma and I want to see him back at his best. And I think he can be at his best. When, and when we see that, he's a one-man midfield for me, really. And we've seen that, like I said, under even different managers, different systems, different teams. And it's just sadly not showing that consistently enough to probably give people that confidence that he has that number six position nailed down. And it felt like at the beginning of the season, it did feel like he had it nailed down. He looked like kind of the future star man, really, of that midfield, like you had said, right? He everything was sort of playing through him and people were more looking to take him out of the game than they even were Madison in the first 10 games of the season. A lot of that has now changed. And uh, it looks like his sort of, yes, yeah, star status in that midfield, you know, if I put it that way, as that number six is in doubt because a lot of people want to bring in perhaps an even better number six than him this summer. And then if that happens, is his overall future in doubt? I'd like to think not. I'm a, I'm your boat. I think he can still plenty be good enough for this team, and he would offer very good competition to whoever were to come in. And he is an upgrade already on somebody like a Hoybjerg who would be leaving this summer anyways. But it is going to be an interesting one for him. And also, lastly, I just don't think he makes sense as a number eight. Like, I just don't think he offers that threat in the final third that actually pops are would or even like somebody like a Kulisevsky would or even dare I say actually LaCelso who I don't even rate too much but he still offers a much uh, bigger threat you could say in the final third than Basuma has and that's no shame on Basuma it's just for me I just don't think he is best suited at, in that number eight position for what is actually required of you you know kind of happen to be more of a box to box but final verdict from yourself there uh, Ash and absolutely great video and uh, really do appreciate your this conversation yeah I, I the, the thing that worries me is the mentality issue thing where uh, when I say mentality, I mean like confidence in all situations. And that's what helps bring consistency because when things aren't going too well, I, I need that player to still show up. So when you have your, your, your bottom performance can't be at the level where it is now, it needs to be, a consistent base. It needs to be a consistent level where your teammates could be, you know, flandering around you or they might not be having a great game. I need you to step up. That's when I need it. And that's what worries me about him. I haven't seen that, especially of late, or the last few games. Aston Villa was fine. Like, you know, Fulham, he kind of like, I felt like he went into his shell a little bit. And I'm talking about, not, it's not so much off the ball, but on the ball, there was touches that are a bit baggy, you know? And if your touch is a bit baggy, that tells to me that somewhere in your mind, you're doubting yourself. Do you know what I mean? If your pass is slightly off, there's somewhere in your mind, you're slightly doubting yourself. And so that's what I mean by 
mentality. The top yeah. players come rain or shine, they can they can have a bad they can have a bad few minutes, but they're still trying things. They're still gonna try and drop a shoulder. Still gonna take their man on. It doesn't matter. It didn't work the first time. Doesn't work the second time. But the third time, it worked. I see it with like your doggy. We don't mention your doggy in the same breath because your doggy will keep trying things, no matter if he's good or bad. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you can say that with a few other players. You know, they try certain things, doesn't work, but they keep going. I think that's the difference. And so that's the reason why I would probably like. don't see the confidence drop nearly as much in those guys. It's probably yeah, like, it's, a good... it's a lot harder to start games than it is when you're coming off the bench. When you're on the bench, you can see the game. You can see the patterns of play. You can see what's missing. You can say, okay, well, cool. When I come on. I'm going to do X, Y, Z. All right, why is no one pressing? I would do this slightly different. But yeah. when you're in the game, it's different. It's so fast-paced. You've seen it when they've got the cameras on their chest, how quick it is, how intense it is. Do you know what I mean? When they're running. It's it's different when you're in it. But when you're on the sidelines and you have to come on and change the game and you've got an extra amount of energy, it's different. So I would like him to kind of come off the bench and see what type of basuma shows yeah. up then. And then I could judge it a little bit more and be like, ah, okay. Let him yeah. let him take Hoyberg's shoes and let Hoyberg fill in his shoes, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> let, him, wonder, let him live in each other's lives for a little bit. You know what I mean? I wonder if we see a different Basuma if he comes off the I don't know. I could be wrong. I'm just saying I'm just throwing it out there. Do you know what I mean? As a, as a, a counterpoint. So, but, but at the same time, that's the reason why I would like competition moving forward. So we do have the option where, ah, uh, is Basuma going to start today? I don't know. Like, it depends. Are we playing a low block or a high block or is yeah. it a team? Let you know? him be the student on the sidelines. And yeah. yeah. And the, sadly, we'll have to let Hoyberg then be the DJ, you know, for a couple of weeks, but hopefully oh not, for, not for too long. But everybody, please, please do check out Spurs Kings TV. Please check out more of this lovely man, Ashmatic. Love having these conversations with him here. I think, you know, as you can tell, we have a lot of love and faith in Basuma, but I do feel like this is a worthwhile conversation, you know, about. Yeah, his original kind of status with this team and, you know, where his maybe future lies kind of uh, with this club and in his own position with Ange Postacoglu. But we'll leave it there. Like I said in the, the members only video, hopefully we don't have to rehash this conversation. Actually, everything just sort of gets a lot better from here on out. But we'll, uh, yeah. we'll see you for next time, everybody. Come on, you Spurs and the big Ange we trust. We never stop. Everywhere we go. Yeah.